Well, our president has this morning also commented on the situation between Russia and Ukraine. He was speaking at the launch of the Intergovernmental Litigation Forum. I'm joined now by a senior reporter, Sipa Mandla Gorge. Sipa, hi. I think matters around litigation against the state have somewhat been overrun uh, by questions to our president about what is going on uh, between Russia and Ukraine. You actually were part of the team that door stopped him. Tell us what he told you. Indeed, that's simply because South Africa is part of BRICS and Russia is South Africa's trading partner. They are strong historical ties. So when Russia is involved in a conflict, obviously questions will be asked. What is South Africa's position? South Africa and Russia have had strong ties dating many years ago during the liberation struggle of South Africa and many people will be eager to know what is the country's position in this regard as many countries across the world are calling on Russia to withdraw its forces in Ukraine but President Cyril Ramaphosa is of the view that mediation can still work even though by his own admission he does concede that diplomacy has failed. I asked him what is South Africa's position in that regard in terms of the calls for Russia to withdraw its forces from the Ukraine. Of course, he tried to be diplomatic about it. It's a difficult terrain for him. He has to navigate between these, you know, uh, diplomatic ties between South Africa and Russia here. But you can tell that this situation is indeed of concern to him as the president of the Republic of South Africa. We also asked him whether he's been engaged by NATO. There have been reports that NATO has tried to reach out to South Africa to engage them in this regard. Remember that South Africa is part of BRICS with Russia as well. So he did say yes, he's been engaged by NATO, but he did not go at length in providing what was the nature of that discussion. Let's take a listen to what he said, responding to questions about the situation between Russia and Ukraine. This is a matter that we've always been saying. Uh, should be subjected to proper engagement, mediation. Some of us were very disappointed when the meeting between President Biden and President Putin did not happen, because if that meeting had gone ahead without any conditions, I'm sure we would have avoided the calamitous situation that is unfolding now. So right now, the parties need to get together so that we stop this conflict that is now turning to be a violent conflict immediately. And so I call upon the United Nations Security Council to do their mediation work. If there ever was a time in the world where the United Nations Security Council needs to come into its own, this is the time when they must all put their heads together and resolve this conflict so that this war stops. Yeah, it's a tricky situation that South Africa finds itself in. I mean, yesterday, uh, the South African government calling on Russia to withdraw from Ukraine. I would imagine that uh, Russia won't necessarily listen to South Africa, but we have to be careful what we say uh, because we don't particularly want to make an enemy of Russia. So very careful uh, diplomatic language uh, coming there from the president. You also got uh, to squeeze in a question about when he's going to announce the new Chief Justice, I mean, it's taking time, isn't it, Sipa? Indeed, and the nation is waiting. Interviews have been done. Recommendations have been made. At the end of the day, it's up to him. He's the one who's going to take a decision to appoint the Chief of Justice. The Constitution empowers him to do so. We asked him, when is he appointing and briefing the nation about the Chief Justice? He said, well... Hang on, I'm working on it. It's under consideration. You will know. His answer was soon. We pressed him. When is soon? He's non-committal in that regard. Take a listen. The matter is still under consideration, so it will be done in due course. So uh, uh, we're still considering a number of issues. So be patient. Uh, it will happen. When, Mr. President? It is going to happen. <laughs> yes, that big smile. <laughs> it's going to happen at some time. <laughs> and of course, let's now get to the actual reason why the president uh, was at this event today. And that is this launch of this intergovernmental litigation forum. And it sounds quite bizarre, but when you listen to how hard hitting the president was, uh, he uses, uh, you know, he talks about state ineptitude, carelessness in handling litigation issues. Um, 
that government departments need to be much more reactive when there's any threat of litigation. But for me, very damningly, he's saying that South African citizens are now having to resort to the courts to force government to actually fulfill their constitutional duties to citizens. It was pretty hard hitting. One hopes, of course, that this forum is going to help solve things. Tell us what you've managed to understand about how it's going to sort things out. Well, he says at the center of eradicating this issue of litigation, whereby the state has to fork out billions of rents, it's got to do with prioritizing service delivery and ensuring that before you can even go to court, you give people what you promised to give them. And if you are able to deal with speeding up service delivery, citizens will not resort to court, you know, challenges and forcing government to provide them with services. But he has also criticized the attitude of many government departments, whereby instead of settling earlier, they will allow court cases and legal action to drag for a very long period of time. He made an example that there is one case whereby the state was being sued for about 100 million. In the end, the state ended up having to pay for about 1 billion rand because they were dragging their feet. They were unable to deal with the matter urgently. And he says to try and deal with the issues of litigation which have resulted into the state bleeding billions of rand is to deal with the issue of service delivery, but also mediate. Mediation is very important. He says if mediation can be undertaken successfully, most of these cases can be settled earlier. Let's take a listen. The ballooning costs of state litigation have become untenable and unsustainable. Now you just look at what the Auditor General says that the contingent liability is $147 billion. Now just with that amount of money Imagine the number of things that we would be able to. We would be able to pump money into public employment. We would be able to pump money into education, into health, into a whole range of things. Instead, money is going towards paying legal suits. Uh, Siba, one final question on the uh, president's statements on Ukraine and Russia. Uh, he's pushed again for mediation and for negotiation to keep trying that route, uh, called on Russia to pull out of Ukraine. Do you expect any further action or commentary from our government about this matter, or do you think we're going to stay out of it from here on in? There is no staying out of it. Diplomatically, they need to be seen to be doing something. Russia is South Africa's partner when it comes to BRICS. But realistically speaking, what can South Africa do? There have been calls for South Africa to impose sanctions on Russia. Many countries have taken that route. But deep down, we do know that that will not be an easy decision for South Africa to take. Even in BRICS setup, South Africa is regarded as, quote, unquote, an insignificant partner. You look at the number and, you know, the nature of economies that are involved in BRICS, Russia, China, India, Brazil. You know, South Africa is just an insignificant part, quote, unquote. So there isn't nothing much that the country can do in terms of dealing with the situation in Russia and Ukraine, except to call for diplomatic exchanges, to call for mediation, even though President Cyril Ramaphosa concedes that diplomacy has failed. That's why you have this uh, military action going on in Ukraine. But he seems to be pushing for a stronger line here for the United Nations and the United Nations Security Council to do something more because at least that's where the powers are located in terms of trying to deal with the situation between Russia and Ukraine. But as for South Africa, there isn't much that the country can do in terms of capacity and influence except to call for diplomacy to continue to be exercised even though it has failed. All right, thank you so much. That's our senior reporter in Pretoria, Sipa Mandla Gorge.